With a billion dollar trial just days away, a judge has officially sanctioned Fox News for withholding evidence in the defamation lawsuit with Dominion. He's also considering censure and further investigations. Keep in mind, jury selection starts tomorrow. Today, lawyers for Dominion played recordings Fox News producer Abby Grossberg made back in 2020, which were not handed over to Dominion's lawyers during discovery. The team at Alex Wagner tonight obtained those recordings earlier. Here's one of them, a conversation between Fox News staff and Trump campaign officials on December 5th, 2020. Are any of the machines, I know it was on War Room the other day with Steve Bannon, have any of the machines been looked at? He had said that one was looked at in Georgia. Uh, I'd have to check on that in terms of Georgia. I know during the audit they did check on those machines. Um, they're really, you know, the, the, if we can just go off the record for one sec here. Yeah, it should, of course. Um, I, I, want, I don't want us to say it if it's... Not that's why we're yeah, checking. I would, I would, I would, I think they have looked at the machines. Um, when the when the Secretary of State did its audit, uh, there there was a lot, of, I think, a fair bit of looking at the machines. Um, you know, the audit came in pretty darn close to what the machine count was with the receipts. So, you know, I don't know the outcome of those, but our understanding, again, this is from the Secretary of State's office, was that there weren't any physical issues with machines on those inspections. So the big lie is just a big lie. Tonight, Bloomberg is reporting that Rupert Murdoch is set to be one of the first witnesses in the trial. They say that according to people familiar with the matter, he could take the stand as early as Monday. With me to discuss, Jeremy Peters, political reporter for The New York Times, and Joyce Vance is still here. Joyce, first question, what does it mean to get sanctioned? Well, it's an interesting question, this close to trial stuff, because usually when a party is sanctioned, the repercussions include, for instance, being prohibited from offering evidence. But here, that's not really the issue. The issue is whether or not failing to disclose this issue made it more difficult for Dominion to get summary judgment, which would have prevented the entire trial from going forward. Frankly, it's a little bit of a mess, but now Dominion has some really great evidence to prove the most important thing they have to prove at trial, which is actual malice, showing that Fox either had reckless disregard towards the falsity of information they were putting out on their airwaves or that they actually knew that it was false. And this evidence, I think, frankly, is just a nail in that coffin. On the backside, the lawyers and Fox News itself may face repercussions. The judges said he's considering appointing a special master to look into these failures in discovery, and that can have very serious consequences. Jeremy, let's just lay this out, because this trial hinges on whether Fox News knowingly lied on air. And now Fox News is in trouble for withholding evidence. What in the world is going on here? Are, are the lawyers not even doing their jobs? It's not a good look for the lawyers a few days away from trial. The last thing you want as a defendant in a defamation case as strong as this one is, is to have the judge angry with you. Because while a jury will decide whether or not Fox defamed Dominion, <clears throat> The judge still has incredible power to determine the parameters of the arguments Fox lawyers can make to defend themselves. And right now, you know, I was in the courtroom yesterday, Steph, and I could tell just how gingerly the Fox lawyers were tiptoeing around the judge. They have already upset him so much, and they're aware of this, and they are trying as best they can, although they're not really succeeding at this, to avoid angering him even further. Today, I wasn't in the courtroom, but my colleague Katie Robertson was, and she told me the judge just went off on Fox. He clearly sat on this overnight with this, this, new, this revelation that Fox had withheld key evidence that Rupert Murdoch is closely involved in the day-to-day -day business of Fox News, officially closely involved, and that's a very important legal distinction. They withheld that from Dominion. Finally, they acknowledge it, and everybody in, in the courtroom uh, at the lawyers' tables was kind of like, well, okay, why did this take so long? Why was this withheld here? And, you know, Joyce is right. It is a bit of a mess. Joyce, these lawyers aren't dopes. God only knows what they get paid by the hour. 
Are they trying to infuriate this judge? Are they trying to make him blow his top so they can use this for an appeal? We're not getting a fair shake from this guy because it makes no sense why they would put themselves in this position. It's really hard to know. And there was a little bit of a suggestion today. The lawyers almost seem to distance themselves a little bit from their clients, which is an odd position to be in this close to trial. Uh, what we still don't know for certain is did Fox produce these items to the lawyers and it somehow was up to the lawyers um, to turn it over? It sounds a little bit more like Fox may have withheld them even from the lawyers. As that becomes more clear, I think we'll have a better understanding. The lawyers, though, are, are frankly in a great deal of danger. They could lose their licenses to practice law if the state bar takes them to task for what's a very clear failure in discovery. So ultimately, they may end up on the opposite side of this matter from their current client. Jeremy, what do you make of this Bloomberg reporting that Rupert Murdoch himself could take the stand on Monday and it would be Dominion calling him up? I mean, could he end up, could his testimony be the foundation for Dominion's case? Well, look, we already knew he was very, very likely to testify. The judge ruled that But Fox he could. didn't want him to testify. They they did not. No, but the judge basically said that's irrelevant. He, you know, Dominion can compel him to testify. Even if it's inconvenient for him. The first, even if it's inconvenient. And, 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 well, Fox tried to stop this by saying, look, he, he's in his 90s. And the judge uh, actually got very irritated by this. I was, I was, I was in on the hearing that day. And the judge said, look, I just read that Rupert Murdoch has been engaged. Now, of course, he's not engaged Yeah, guess what? He was longer. thrown down at the Super Bowl um, sitting next to Elon Musk. Yeah. It's not like he's incapacitated. And the judge pointed this out. He's like, I don't want to hear these excuses that he's some infirm man, which, like, clearly he's not. He, he will testify if Dominion wants him to. So I don't think it's that much of a surprise that uh, Dominion would want to call him early. And the first day that we will hear from Dominion witnesses is on Monday when we have opening arguments in the case. Now, this has the potential to be an incredibly explosive moment because Rupert's deposition in this case was really pretty damning. It was a pretty pivotal moment in establishing wow. that Fox endorsed these claims of, of, of false voter for these false claims of voter fraud at the hands of Dominion machines. Rupert, in his testimony, admitted that Fox host endorsed the claims. And that's contrary to what Fox lawyers had argued, which was, no, we didn't endorse this. We just presented them as something that Trump and his attorneys were saying because that's, that's inherently true. That is newsworthy. That is 100% false. And the, false. the judge agreed with you and said, that's, that's, that's false. And you can't argue that at trial. Joyce, before I let you leave, new topic. Donald Trump now filing a lawsuit against his former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, to the tune of half a billion dollars. Like, it's like straight out of Austin Powers. What's going on here? The timing makes it look like an effort to silence Cohen, to intimidate Cohen, to frighten Cohen. And of course, witness intimidation is something that judges don't take too very nicely. So this may well be another situation where a judge considering a criminal case in this instance um, has something to say. You know, Donald Trump is free to file whatever lawsuits he wants to. He often files frivolous lawsuits. They end up being dismissed. But the context for this one, I think, makes it look a little bit more suspicious than usual. Um, and I don't think it will be a very successful endeavor for the former president. What was it? Michael Cohen met with the DA 18, 19 times. Too late to shut him up. Good evening once again. I'm Stephanie Rule. In a vote that took less than one single minute, local Memphis officials reappointed ousted Tennessee lawmaker Justin Pearson to his seat. The decision comes just days after Republicans expelled the Democratic lawmaker for peacefully protesting gun violence on the state house floor. Today, after the vote, Pearson made it clear this was not over. You can't expel hope.
On Monday, Nashville officials returned State Representative Justin Jones to his seat. Republicans also removed him for protesting gun violence on the House floor. Meanwhile, we're awaiting a ruling from a federal appeals court on a Texas judge's decision to halt FDA approval of an abortion pill. The court rule could come at any time. The Washington Post reporting that the Biden White House is preparing for a major legal and political battle to ensure access to abortion medications. But state officials are already taking action, some going as far as stockpiling abortion pills. We decided uh, last week to obtain three or four years supply of this product, and they will not be allowed to take away uh, this product from Washington women because our state law allows this to be distributed. And that state law is going to allow us to continue to do so no matter what the judges do. Extremist judges have made it clear that they won't stop at any one particular drug or service. So it's going to ensure that New Yorkers will continue to have access to medication abortion no matter what. Also this evening, there is major news in the Dominion Fox News lawsuit. Jury selection is expected to begin tomorrow, and the judge has now sanctioned Fox News for withholding evidence in the $1.6 billion defamation suit. We'll have much more on what that means later in the hour. We begin tonight with the news that three decades of Irish killing Irish may be at an end. Under the proposal, Northern Ireland remains a part of Great Britain, but its 1.6 million people govern themselves in a new legislature. Unprecedented power sharing between the Protestant majority and the Catholic minority. What the plan does not eliminate is deep hatred that's left more than 3,000 people dead during 30 years of what they call the Troubles. The last thing before we go tonight, when hope and history rhyme. President Biden was in Northern Ireland today, marking 25 years since the historic Good Friday Agreement. In a speech in Belfast, he acknowledged some of America's own divisions and struggles with democracy today. But he stressed the importance of remaining hopeful. Here are some of those remarks. I think uh, sometimes, especially when the distance of history, we forget how hard earned, how astounding that peace was at the moment. It shifted the political gravity in our world. Literally, it shifted the political gravity. In 1998, it was the longest-running conflict in Europe since the end of World War II. Thousands of families have been affected by the troubles. Losses are real. We in the United States have firsthand experience how fragile even long-standing democratic institutions can be. You saw what happened on January the 6th in my country. We learn anew with every generation that democracy needs champions. But the lesson of the Good Friday Agreement is this. In times when things seem fragile or easily broken, that is when hope and hard work are needed the most. Hope and hard work is right.